So my name is Ted Orm. I, uh, I head up the uh, enterprise data strategy uh, for Click, but really I'm, I'm from the Attunity side of the business. Click bought Attunity uh, earlier in the year, uh, and I've been with Attunity for almost uh, almost 20 years, um, and uh, and I've worn many hats in the time while I've been at Attunity. But really, I I care about uh, I'm I'm a, probably a solution architect at heart building out the structures, understanding how things work and how they fit together. Uh, and really just, uh, I also face up and look after our technology alliances, looking after our relationships with Microsoft and Amazon and Google, with sort of Cloudera, Snowflake, Confluence and the like. Uh, because no one just buys a data integration solution on its own. It's always in combination with a, with a strategy, with a plan of, of, uh, of, of, of what you're looking to build in the field. So uh, a little bit of overview, a little bit of background of what we're going to cover today. Uh, look at some of the, the traditional use cases, stories uh, about how we've helped organizations deliver value from their data, uh, and, and some overriding answers of, of some takeaways, hopefully, about how we can help your organizations or some of the projects that you're, you're also working on today. Um, so just, uh, ju just a little bit of background, a little bit of sort of market research, not, not going to uh, completely uh, change your universe and world, but just to understand this, you know, we're all here, aren't we? Big data London, data. Data is at the heart of everything that we do and the, and the jobs that we run and, and, and the belief that, that what can change your organization. And it's interesting just to look back, if we're going to look forward, looking back also. Uh, the largest companies by, by market capital just 10 years ago were the for those traditional, you know, the sort of the Walmarts, ExxonMobil, those, uh, as opposed to those organisations today, by market cap, these are these are. Uh, and what do we know? What do we? What can we see? Whether or not you like these organisations or not, these organisations are using data, driving innovation through data as as that sort of data as an asset. Those was doing more with your data to drive innovation and change, and and. And looking forward, what might be those organizations in another 10 years that by market cap are the largest? There's a, an interesting, I like the quote that uh, the CDO from MasterCard uses in driving innovation and change. It's, it's not the big fish, it's not the big fish that's eating the small fish, it's the fast fish that's eating the slow fish. If you're doing more and changing and driving innovation within your organizations to do things with data, to, to democratize data, to give it to your employees to, so that empower them to drive and do things differently with data, you'll be part of that next generation of, of companies that are growing that will be, uh, will be there on the right-hand side. And so it's, it's, it's not a surprise, these are sort of Gartner, Gartner numbers and Gartner quotes, that analytics and uh, machine learning, AI uh, are, are number one and two. So data and AI has been number one for about the last sort of six or seven years. AI machine learning is at number two, but you know, between the two of them, they are dominating what organizations are, are care about in order to, to drive innovation and change. And it's interesting, the, uh, the stat in the middle about the CDO and the CDO's drivers and organizations, that most organizations will, will have uh, identified the need and, and put in place a CDO, someone at the board who understands the strategy around data and have their teams that will, uh, that will deliver that within an organization. And they're going to get more budget than other, other divisions. Their, their budgets are growing faster. But actually, the bit that's more interesting, I think, is the fact that Gartner believe that over 50%, 50% of those teams are not going to show value, are not going to succeed even though they've got more budget, even though it's the number one thing that they should be focused on. Even only 50% will be seen as being successful within their organization. And why is that? It's, it's because it's difficult. I mean, this is just, uh, you know, if, if, if you're in a small organization that's all in the cloud and you're, you're innovating and driving and just and building new services, this is fine. But in the reality of, uh, of, of big enterprise, there is an on-premise legacy application estate that is your, your asset. This is what's helping you drive your business and you want to innovate in the cloud with newer technologies as well. And that is the complex world in which, uh, in which 
Attunity and the, and the Click Data Integration Division are helping organizations on that journey to, 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 to drive new innovation, to build new applications in, in, in different platforms. So these trends, uh, they're sort of you know, uh, always split into three, and there are just two slides here that just outline some of the trends that we're seeing and helping organizations. And the first one is a traditional one we know, moving away from just on-premise applications to the cloud. What can we do more with? What is the, the, the benefits of cloud, the, the elasticity of separation of compute and storage and, uh, and doing more within that space? The, s the second one is, is interesting because uh, probably only five or six years ago, people thought that the data warehouse was, was doomed. It, was, uh, it, it you know, wasn't really showing value. It, it cost a lot of money and it wasn't, uh, wasn't really being innovative and uh, deliver analytics fast enough to the business. But we're seeing a next generation of data warehousing and data lakes. I think we've just seen in the keynote there, Microsoft in their, in their synapse and their bringing together of the lake and, and the warehouse into one. Here, we see it actually as more as a service, meaning this is the rise of Snowflake, Redshift, BigQuery, the, uh, the, this, the, the cloud data warehousing platforms that take away that on-premise on complexity but can deliver now the value of, 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 of having data in a structured format that can answer those questions that you need for the business. And the third part is, is the rise of streaming. And here we also saw in the, in the keynote uh, uh, confluence uh, and, and, and and, and doing more with data in a streaming application as opposed to having traditional OLTP transactional systems. So these are, these are trends that we're seeing and in innovating and changing. And Attunity and, and our core technologies are helping our customers and clients innovate and drive, drive these types of projects and solutions today. One more slide about trends that are just uh, a little bit too wordy, I think, on this one. But again, it's use cases, and I'll tell some use cases around this. And the first one is, is, is we're seeing that application modernization. And here, this is just uh, ubiquitous. It's everywhere. Everybody has a, has a banking app now on their phone. Everybody. It's just uh, it's the way that people work, banking, you know, transferring money, paying for things. Uh, that banking app needs real-time data in order to, you know, have I been paid? Has the mortgage gone out? All those types of real-time queries against that application. Not that long ago, that, that query used to go directly against the mainframe, costing a MIPS, MIPS uh, process. Again, an IBM would say, thank you very much, and, and charge you for that, for that refresh. Modern building applications in the cloud, that is where people are, are, are doing new things with data. But still, the on-premise data that sits within insurance and banking and retail sits within those on-premise applications. You need to unlock that, bring, that, bring the data to the application. And we're seeing a lot of uh, use cases around that. Really nice story that we've got uh, published on, on you working with uh, Swiss Life. Swiss Life, actually, and also Zurich, very similar stories. Zurich has a, has a My Zurich. If you're a Zurich customer, you can go onto a website and put in your, your details. And all of your policies and all of your environments are sitting there looking for you to, uh, to, to explore. And, and, and you can also predict what, what things will look like for you in the future. Uh, and that is, again, pulling data out of, out of mainframes, out of DB2, out of IMS, vSAM, and the like, the big, chunky mainframe platforms into a cloud application to service you as a customer, to be closer to you as a customer. The second those trends that we're seeing that was, is, is that data warehouse as a service. And here, as a service, is a critical component that we'll see more and more and more. Almost data as a service is, co is sitting alongside this as a platform, as an innovation. And the, like I said before, the rise of Snowflake, Redshift, BigQuery, these are all you know, database cloud databases in the cloud that are servicing those needs. And the environments, the third one would be, would be the data lake. And here, data lake in the cloud is the differentiation here. Gartner called it out. You know, some time ago when they said Hadoop is dead, I don't think they really meant Hadoop is dead. What they were saying was that the, the, the hype cycle of, of the ROI that, uh, that Hadoop could give you wasn't, wasn't living up to that expectation because it was complex. Those first big data lake on-premise platforms, I know people here are sort of nodding. You had to have 30 different applications. You even had to have one called Zookeeper that looked after all the other animals in the system, all of them with their own release cycles, with their own patches, with their own. It was complex and it was difficult. 
now the modern map data lakes environments running on AWS or ADLS or Databricks now or Cloudera this is a managed service for you. You can really, the, the vision of a data lake, bringing all of your data in the raw, landing it in a place for discovery and analytics, that schema on read over in schema on write methodology still makes business sense. Still it has a use case that is driving innovation and change that a warehouse never can. But the modern data lake now with that, with the cloud elasticity of separation of compute and storage, really can give you this this uh, this this outcome. And these are the most successful projects where we're working on and helping organisations today. So, this just walks through then the one slide about how Attunity help organisations deliver on those those use cases, deliver on that, and and about helping them innovate and change. And it all starts with data, your, your data. Transactional systems that, you're, that are running your organization today, Oracle, SQL, DB2, SAP, mainframes, that's older mainframes like IMS and vSAM as well as just iSeries and, and the like. Transactional systems that have OLTP. And, and we are just reading transactional logs. We're not installing anything over here. Even on SAP, SAP HANA, we're not putting any agents, we're not putting any, any code on your production systems but we're reading transactional logs, and as we see a commit come through, we will move that and stream that, a pipeline, an automated pipeline to wherever you need it within the business. And then there are three, and I, always, I don't have a better word for it, I'm gonna say swim lanes, that's what the American eyes call it, there's three endpoints where we can support the types of endpoints that, of moving data to. And the simplest one is, uh, is, is an ODS, a real-time, transactionally consistent copy of your production systems. Oracle to SQL Server, DB2 to Oracle, MySQL to Postgres. These are just a replication, an ODS, a real-time, transactionally consistent copy. But there's still the need for the T. It's just that's OLTP to OLTP. But actually, the value is around the analytics side, bringing data into a warehouse and then automating the T. Someone asked me, am I an ETL vendor? I'll happily say yes, because you've put me in the right bracket. But actually, we do EL, and then we automate the T. We do EL through CDC, the change data capture, and then we automate the T, data warehouse automation on cloud data warehousing platforms. We take a schema, we auto-generate the code needed to create third normal form data warehousing and data marts on the, on the cloud platforms you're running today. And the third endpoint, is the lake. And here, this is where we probably have the most customers and we're working and helping organizations the most. Because a lake at the end of the day is just a file system, whether or not that's on S3, whether or not that's on ADLS Gen 2, whether or not it's on Databricks, Dataproc, Cloudera, MapR, Hadoop, and the like. It's a file system. And we are taking data out of an OLP, OLTP system. And every, it's configurable, every five seconds, five minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour, we, we drop another file into the lake. We drop another file, we drop another file. That can quickly become a swamp. That is the pain. So we also run code directly on the lake, running either Spark or Hive, LLAP or, or Spark or, or Databricks and the like, to then bring the data back again, stitch it back again, and make it usable to the business. SAP to a usable data on a data lake or Databricks Databricks Delta and the like, we support that in the endpoints as well. Bringing data out of operational systems into a lake, end-to-end -end automation. Data pipeline automation is a phrase that we often use here. Because the pipeline is streaming real-time data out of your operational systems and landing it wherever you need it for the business. The only one that isn't sort of highlight Kafka we often put here within the data lake, but Kafka is also here and here if you hear the, uh, the keynote earlier that Kafka is a, a confluent of trying to create ca uh, Kafka as, a, as an in-memory database with KSQL, we see a lot of projects along that. We can just turn a database into a stream and stream that into Kafka or Kinesis or Event Hubs, any of the, uh, the streaming technology platforms uh, to deliver the, only the application layer that you're building in, 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 in streaming technologies. So if we're going to just drive into that a little bit further, into the data lakes and about the, the, the application layer in which we're helping those organizations, 
who are we helping and, and, and where, where is the bottlenecks to bring that in? It is the data, it is the architects. It is uh, deliver then those, those streaming data out of you know, enabling IT to deliver the data to the business in that usable format. Removing that brittle ETL bottleneck of, uh, of coding. Because also, this is where replication also brings you the DDL changes. So as, you know, as opposed to uh, automatically pinging changes out of source systems, a replication component through CDC will automatically propagate those changes into those downstream processes. So you're not having to re-architect all of your ETL code. It's automated, end-to-end, real-time data out of that operational systems, delivering it to wherever it needs to be in the business. So this, this is the gap. This is, a, this is the gap that we have within, within a data lake process, where you have consumers who need the data, want it, you know, want whether or not they're uh, machine learning or AI or they're the, uh, the, uh, the data scientists in the world, and your data is locked within those silos, locked within the, the production systems that are running your organization today. But through CDC and through the Compose, we can capture those changes and land that. And again, land it across heterogeneous platforms. So whether or not the source systems are SAP and we're landing it in, in S3, or landing it in GCP and Dataproc, wherever those systems are heterogeneous end-to-end. -end. But that, again, is, is, is not usable data. So bringing the data back again, standardizing it, merging it, this is the engine, this is the workhorse of our platform itself, running either a Spark code or, or Hive on the lake itself, before then positioning it. And then there are three different outputs that we can generate, depending on the use case. It's either going to be an ODS. An ODS is the last transactional update that you have within the source system itself. The user, you know, what was the transaction that came through from the system? A snapshot, that's the point in time, sort of what did my universe look like on January the 1st or Q1, Q2 and the like, or an, an HDS. And an HDS is the most common one that we see. An HDS is an historical data store. This is a type two slowly changing dimension of all of your transactional history. So this now becomes your source of truth. It hasn't gone through a, a, a large T. It hasn't gone through a large transformation. It's just it's for that schema on, on read methodology so that all of the data is sitting there with that type 2 data out of all of your operational systems. And it's from there that you build your applications. It's from there that machine learning algorithms run on top of that historical store of data. And it runs across any platform. Independence here is key from us. You'll hear this over and over from other sessions, both in Click and Attunity, about the independence of data. Your data should not be locked into your cloud provider. You should look to put it where, wherever the use case may arrive. You know, I'm not going to tell you that Microsoft is better than Amazon or Google is better than this. These are, but just understanding that wherever your data sits, be careful of that lock-in. Because it, however much the full stack looks, you want to be able to be federate that across multiple sources, multiple applications itself. And we can read once and write many, put, it, put different data into different platforms wherever it is needed by the business. So if we look in and, and drill into this in a little bit more detail, there's, we also are, we, ha we have a booth, I can't remember the booth number, 415 uh, over on the side. We, we have live demos, we have live environments running of all of the products and all the solutions about how we're helping. And it is all GUI-driven design. GUI-driven design for, for replicating of data. This is the core component of Replicate, bringing data out of an SAP system and landing it into Snowflake. Within five minutes, I can stream real-time data out of SAP and land it in Snowflake. That's created that ODS layer usable data within cloud data warehousing platforms. But again, it's not analytic ready. When, when Teradata launched their first data warehouse in about 81, selling it to Wells Fargo, they created a whole industry of separation from OLTP systems and warehousing systems. And that's where the, the Kimman and, and Immel sort of methodology of data warehousing platforms, we can also then automate the T. And this is where data warehouse automation takes that landed real-time data, and we can import a model from something like CA Irwin, and we can auto-generate all of the code needed to create that third normal form, data warehousing and data marts, directly on Snowflake. 
or on Redshift, on SQL Data Warehouse, or on, uh, on, on BigQuery on, on, on Google. So again, real-time data out of operational systems, landing it in your landing platform, automatically creating the, the, the code to create that, the warehousing platforms, and then also ma automatically creating the data marts to the business, end to end. Other products and other solutions can do the warehouse automation. Other products can do the CDC component. We are unique and the only organization that can bring real-time data out of operational systems and land it into multiple targets wherever you need that data. And the third environment in that is the data lake. And one of the key challenges around the data lake is then trust, is trust. And this is where the lineage and of, of what we can offer can also bring this. Understanding that structures, where did that data come from? Trusting it and understanding it and also now cataloging it. It's coming out of an SAP system landing and delivering it either in that snapshot ODS or HDS layer to the business. The business can come to a catalog and see that data and understand the value of it to deliver the, the, the use case to the endpoints that they're, they're building today. So whatever that use case is, however we can dr drive innovation and change to, 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 to do more with data, data should not be locked within those silos, your production systems. It should be federated and open to your teams to drive innovation and change in their platforms they're building today. And we've helped organizations on that journey to, to expose that. So just understanding an ecosystem, I said at the beginning, nobody wakes up and thinks, I know, I'm going to... I'm going to invest in a new data integration solution today. It, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> but these are the source systems that are running your organization. Oracle and SQL and DB2 and SAP and IBM and the like, these, these are not going away. And these are the cloud providers in which you are all evaluating and looking on or making that strategy on. I'm a, I'm a Microsoft first, I'm an Azure first, I'm a cloud first, I'm all in on Google. These are, the, these are the discussions that at the, the board level organizations are going through, or they're going through that multi-cloud strategy. I want data out of my operational systems into all of the clouds based on that use case. And these are the, the unicorns, the sort of the fast-growing application, you know, all out here. These are all the, the organizations that we're working on that run across the clouds. You can run Snowflake on multiple clouds. Databricks will be launching on Google next year, run currently on AWS and Microsoft. Confluent and streaming runs across all of those platforms. So again, the uniqueness of bringing operational data, this is where we sit. Our foot is, 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 is in both camps. Bringing operational data out of the, your most valuable data and bringing it to wherever you're building your applications today or across all of those systems. So we can read once and write many and land that into multiple clouds. We, uh, 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 one of our uh, sort of very public uh, uh, sort of uh, customers is uh, working with Commerce Bank in Germany. It's a good use case because it just tells the story about how their innovation and changing both at the board level and at IT. Commerce Bank are about the second or fourth largest bank in Germany. Very, very conservative, very almost like a, a government organization. But about three years ago, they knew they were in trouble. They knew they were in trouble because of the, the challenger banks that are coming up and the process that they weren't doing enough with, with, with their overall platform. And they went to the market and they went to California and they hired a guy out of Google, a guy called Kerem Toma, who turned up and, and, and he, he led with a st where strategy, strategy eats culture. And he led with a strategy about innovation and change and data, building a cloud-first cloud platform across all clouds, not going to go on one cloud or another. He was ex-Google, but he's going on Microsoft, Amazon, and Google, of bringing the data to his teams, to his data scientist teams, to his application teams, to the, the API teams building, building, uh, building applications for the bank itself. And he has driven at that, that culture into a bank like that to then do more with data, to be more, uh, uh, to be more democratized, to open up the data that they hold in order that individuals can be empowered to drive more and, and do, more, uh, do more change within that. So why Attunity and why can we help? This is the one sentence that describes everything that we do. What do we do? We efficiently deliver high volumes of data in real time to whatever platform you want. 
to whatever technology, whatever, whatever uh, uh, sort of other vendor out there you're working, we will work with you in order to, to unlock the value in which the data you have. And we are recognized as being leaders. Gartner call us out as being leaders of the data of CDC. We're leaders of the cloud uh, migration and cloud applications. So Amazon, we are their only main vendor for doing CDC into the cloud. Microsoft OEM and embed our products into their, into their technologies today. And leading the way, Google Next uh, event is going to be next week. We'll be there, we'll talk with some of our customers like JLR, helping them on that journey to Google Cloud and, and streaming data out of on-premise SAP environments to Google Cloud. We are leading and helping organizations on that journey. And for a final sort of takeaway and reading about how we've helped that, there's a nice article that's been co-hosted and written by Gartner. Gartner have phrased a new terminology called data ops. Data ops is the blending of sort of DevOps and data fail fast methodology of, of it's not a product or a solution it's a it's a process it's a culture of, of developing fast of doing more with data it's a really nice article I it's only been launched it's only been released a couple of weeks ago uh, and, and we've we've helped on there are lots of use cases and stories about how we've helped other organizations be more competitive and do more with data it's a really good read and uh, or you can come by and uh, register and we'll, we'll send you a copy as well Otherwise, that's, uh, like I say, I'll just say we, we, we are doing more live demos. We have also a coffee machine available. So if you want to come and have a coffee on us, don't need to spend it uh, around, around the events. Come by and have a free coffee. And, uh, and otherwise, uh, thank you very much.